I've been very fortunate to have been following a healthy lifestyle pretty much all my adulthood. I've been following this biohacking and healthy lifestyle habits pretty much since I finished high school. But it's not like I haven't made any mistakes <laughs> during my health journey. It's not like I found the perfect formula right at 18. I'm gonna tell you what my biggest mistakes in biohacking have been, what have accelerated my aging the most, and how you can avoid them. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. It's showtime. So mistake number one is the thing that has damaged my health the most and has probably accelerated my aging the most is a short experiment I did with polyphasic sleeping a few years ago. When I was in college around 2016, I followed a polyphasic sleeping schedule for 100 days. If you're not aware, then polyphasic sleeping is a way of sleeping where you sleep in multiple chunks throughout the 24-hour period instead of sleeping in one go for eight hours. I have a very old video explaining this, but it, the main idea is that my sleep schedule was around three and a half hours at night with around three 20 minute naps throughout the day. Now that's definitely not something that I recommend. It's definitely not healthy for you and it does accelerate your aging and it does you know increase the risk of many other chronic diseases. And after about a hundred years of following this schedule I decided that yeah it's not worth it. Like the quality of your waking hours just decreases so much, the quality of your physical performance decreases and you don't really see that much like improvements in your gym performance specifically. Big mistake. The second mistake is not prioritizing cardiovascular fitness and not doing any VO2 max training. Now I have maintained a very physically active lifestyle all my adulthood, but my main focus has always been strength training hypertrophy training for muscle growth and like calisthenics and those kind of things. So I've never done like specific cardiorespiratory fitness up until maybe the last three years. I've started to do cardio for the last three or four years. And the reason I started to add more cardio has to do with the fact that after looking at the research, you see that cardiorespiratory fitness is associated with much greater mortality risk reduction than strength training. Compared head to head, then cardiorespiratory fitness and a higher view to max will give you a lot greater reduction in your risk of mortality and greater life expectancy. So obviously you do want to do both. You do want to do strength training, which is also associated with reduced mortality. But if you neglect cardio, then I don't think that's optimal like cardio should still buy like a foundation to your health routine and then you also want to do strength training and muscle growth training fortunately i have been doing cardio over the last three to four years quite consistently and it has had a very beneficial effect on just my energy levels and just overall health and biomarkers and this brings me to point number three which is not tracking your biomarkers that frequently and not changing your routines based on your blood work results because all the different biomarkers like like your glucose, hemoglobin A1C, your immune cells, your cholesterol, triglycerides, and inflammation levels, all of them are just a reflection of your health, how healthy your body is actually inside, because how you feel can be completely different to what, what is actually going on inside you. And the blood work is the most accurate way to assess your disease risk and your health status right now. That's why I think that tracking your blood work at least once a year should be like a staple to everyone who wants to keep track of their health status and you know whether or not they're heading in the right direction. And based on your blood work results, you should make educated changes to your routines, to your diet, to your exercise, to your supplementation routines and other lifestyle habits. Because you know, this is the data, this is the objective data that doesn't really lie. It will tell you, okay, you have this biomarker is out of range, it's too high, or it's too low and it means that something is wrong you're not in optimal health right now and if you want to make sure that you live a healthy long life then you should fix that biomarker whatever that biomarker is unfortunately many people don't measure their biomarkers they're not even aware whether or not something is wrong and even then most people aren't willing to change their habits like they're not willing to give up certain foods to improve their biomarkers even the even if they see that the biomarker is out of range but if you do want to maintain good biomarkers and and stay in optimal health status and to promote your longevity then yeah you should change your habits based on the blood work results mistake number four is not starting to take collagen sooner so collagen is something that uh, many people take to reduce skin wrinkles and stuff like that obviously in my 20s i don't have 
you know, any visible signs of uh, wrinkles or stuff like that. It's uh, mostly people in their 30s and 40s is when they start to worry about this thing. But collagen degradation already starts in your 20s. Although you don't see wrinkles in your 20s visibly, they're there, like micro wrinkles and the process of collagen degradation is already taking place even if you don't necessarily see it. That's why I think it's worthwhile to start taking collagen already in your 20s pretty regularly because you're going to get the precursors to collagen synthesis. And we have multiple human clinical trials showing that collagen peptide supplementation reduces skin wrinkles, reduces hallmarks of skin aging, promotes skin longevity, improves skin elasticity and those kind of things. I've been taking collagen regularly for the last two to three years, but I wish I started sooner. I wish I started taking it already when I was 21 or 22 years old. And the last mistake is shortening my sleep which kind of coincides with the first idea of polyphasic sleeping but even after I stopped polyphasic sleeping I've always been the kind of person who keeps their sleep uh, somewhat short like usually I sleep around seven to seven and a half hours even right now and on some days I might get to eight hours but even like last year it wasn't uh, a rare occasion for me to sleep only like five to six hours and of course I'm very young I have like a lower sleep demand in general like I can get away with sleeping shorter but person I think that it's a mistake to sleep only like five to six hours. You should definitely want to sleep at least seven to eight hours. Right now, I've been actually seeing a lot of improvements in my sleep and the sleep consistency of actually sleeping until seven to eight hours. And uh, yeah, this is something that I wish I did sooner. I wish I actually kept to the regular consistent sleep schedule of sleeping at least seven to eight hours. And I wish I actually like sleep eight hours all the time. But there you go. These are the five biggest health mistakes. Of course, they're not like super serious, at least a few of them, like it's not very serious that you didn't take collagen or that you didn't train cardio. But you know, obviously, over the long term, the, the idea of chronically depriving yourself of sleep or doing polyphasic sleeping or having a lot of jet lag and those kind of things chronically over the long term, it will have a significant negative effect on your longevity. So that's why you should avoid that. And that's why I also have changed my routines. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.